Whew. That was extraordinary. We are now going actually right across the street for the next meal. In part one of this ultimate Korean food tour in Los Angeles, we had freshly made Korean noodles and got access to one of the most exciting Korean kitchens with some of the best food in LA. I'm actually overwhelmed. A row of three by five banchan. Now in part two, we're eating Korean barbecue, starting with a unique meat experience. Cheers, Ready? man. Okay. A quick corn dog stop. Oh. Oh. <laughs> and an epic barbecue short rib to finish. So grab a snack and sit back and let's keep eating our way through K-Town. Mm. All the juices are just pouring out. Steve, I like how you're still you're still drinking the digestive beverage right there, which you need. We need I it. We need it, yes. <laughs> so the next place that we're going today on this ultimate Korean food tour today, what's the name of this place, Steve? Sun Ha Jung. Come to think of it, I've been to Korea three, four, maybe five times. I can't remember eating duck in Korea. I can't either. This is actually the first time I'm trying it. Thanks to Eater LA for this recommendation here. Yeah. And then our friend Jeffrey said this is a must when we're in K-Town. Something I love is that there's almost no menu. You basically just come here and you just say however many orders of duck that you want. And usually that's one per person. So we got a couple orders of the duck. They immediately put the hot plate on the stove and it's not just your average hot griddle. It's this one that has a, it's on a lean. Oh, that mountain, mountain of meat. That is a mountain, yes. Ooh, what do they do here? Oh. Stuff it in that hole. Kimchi in the hole. Oh, here we go. Oh. Wow. Oh, this is the duck, obviously. This is so exciting, Mark. Oh, man. That was a beautiful show. There's this little drain at the top. Um, she fills it with kimchi, and then this entire plate of duck goes on in just this cloud of steam. And that's simmering down. You can smell the duck coming out. You can smell that. You can look at the, the oils of duck fat seeping out, coming out, and juice. That's like a river of oil in there. Yep. Bubbling. So basically, we're cooking the meat in its own fat. This all here uh -huh. in this liquid is duck fat. Uh, the duck fat is actually very healthy for you. It has lots of collagen. It lowers your cholesterol and helps with digestion. So if you'd like, you could take your spoon and drink it to try Whoa. it out. It's actually very tasty. All right. Yes. You getting that aroma? I am. <laughs> mm. That. I'm just trying to see how it smells different than a typical like pork or beef barbecue. But this is supposed to be a healthier option from what I heard. It's my first time trying this. Yeah. yeah, never seen anything like it, right? I, I, you know, I didn't even know duck had this much fat and oil in it. <laughs> that is a lot of fat and juices coming out of that duck. Oh yeah. It's good to know that it's healthy. Yes, I was actually kind of concerned about that, but I heard that it's actually pretty safe to eat. <laughs> and by the way, they're gonna make a fried rice out of this thing afterwards. <laughs> out of the duck fat. Oh yeah. <laughs> but that's coming later. Okay, you take some salad. Put it on your plate. Thank you. And you take a piece of duck meat. All right. On top of the salad. Wow. You're welcome to dip the meat in any sauce that you'd like. Uh, so you dip the meat into a sauce and then put it back on your mm -hmm. salad? Yeah. Okay. And then you put, put a on some of the radishes on top. Okay. A little bit Radish of on top. These are like pickled onions? Mm -hmm. Pickled onions. Okay. And chives. And chives. Yeah. If you eat that in a whole bite together. So you, you take all of that salad mm -hmm. with the bite? Yep. Nice. Okay. Wow. So the technique here is now to then take this entire base salad at the bottom with the duck with the pickled vegetables and just plop the whole thing in your mouth like that all right man mm. Mm. oh yeah i love that base of salad and those pickled onions mm -hmm. and then you've got the duck that flavor oh man yeah i mean that's why it's healthy too just an entire mouthful of vegetables and herbs Maybe some of the sauce and what do you think? Pepper or salt? Sure. Something like that. Mm. That's good. Oh. oh. Once it's done, you can put it 
Oh, and nice. Like mashed awesome. Imagine that, the garlic. The garlic in duck, the duck fat. Duck fat, garlic. Oh, this is fun. Good. She said you could dip it, dip it in oh. here, then back onto your bed of lettuce, add on those chives, mm -hmm. add on that pickled onion, oh, yeah. add on that pickled onion, and again, just like take up the entire pile. Yep. Mm. Oh. I, I love that crispiness. Mm -hmm. It gets even better as it sizzles down more. Crispifies, the flavor intensifies. Mm -hmm. It condenses. Wow. So your parents developed this recipe, cooking, cooking duck and eating it this mm -hmm. way yeah. here at this restaurant. Wow. That's awesome. <laughs> how, how long has your family owned this restaurant? Uh, more than 30 years. More than 30 years. <laughs> Very cool. <laughs> I'm trying to think of how it tastes like. It's like, or very thin slices of pork. Something like that. Kind of like pork belly, yeah. Kind of, yeah. Re up on that salad. Take one of these pieces of duck here that's been caramelized. Look at, look at how brown it turns. How brown and crispy. Dip in the chili sauce. Onto your little mountain of salad, onions. Chives go on. It's such a unique barbecue experience. So, so refreshing, so different from any other Korean barbecue I've ever tasted. Right. Mm. Who would have thought, huh? <laughs> oh, good. Mm -hmm. By the way, did you put that hot sauce on it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> that makes it the next move, and this is the ultimate pro move. Take your spoon, dip it into the melted duck fat and just take a bite of it like soup. Yeah. Look at that slightly yellow color from that skin melted down. Ready? Okay. Here we go. Wow, that's actually pretty good. Oh. Yeah, you're right. It's like the spoon is hot, but the fat is not that hot. Yeah. Oh, ho, 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 ho. Mm. Do you know what this reminds me of? Oh, 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 man. You know, like the ch the the Chinese like roast duck or the pecking duck. You know, like when you bite into the skin and there's and that juices inside. That, that's exactly what it tastes like. Up, straight up melted fat. Oh yeah. Man, that's rich and buttery and so much duck flavor. But it would be good chased with some kimchi to kind of break the the fattiness. Oh. Mm. Mm. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> Oil. Let's try some of this garlic. All right, garlic action time. Garlic that's been bubbling in duck fat. Mm -hmm. Oh. Mm. It's so oh, hot, man. <laughs> but it's so good too. What a texture. Mm -hmm. It's mild. Mm. Mm -hmm. That is incredible. So what is next? So it's the uh, duck fat fried rice. It's a uh, cooked rice, but we put it in the fridge, so it's uh, broken apart and hard. Uh, and there's kimchi, chives, and perilla seeds on top. Wow. Oh, man. Look at all that meat. Wow, are you excited, Mark? Oh, man, this is amazing. <laughs> there's a, a small kiddie pool's worth of duck fat at the bottom there. Seriously, but you don't want to be swimming around that. <laughs> wow, so this whole thing is just stir frying. And the kimchi go on. Yeah, almost kind of like a bibimbap duck fried rice. Yeah. <laughs> you want to go home? Oh, and with the duck in it too? Yeah. <laughs> This is truly a highlight that was truly, truly amazing. What a creation.
Absolutely. You said it perfectly. <laughs> now all we got to do is eat it now. I can't wait. And you can see on the edges, she flattened it out. And you can just hear that sizzle. Oh, you want to scoop all the way from the bottom. There's duck mixed in, garlic. There's that fat just dripping. Be careful. <laughs> okay. Cheers, Ready? man. Okay. Wow. Uh -huh. mm. wow, that's pretty good. Wow. Oh man, that is insane. Just completely moist and hydrated. Oh, it's so good. And then you've got that little sourness from the kimchi that she mashed up in there. Mm -hmm. So that, that acidity is breaking up the richness of it. And the oil itself, you know, it doesn't taste like oily oily you know what i'm saying like you know how you like vegetable oil you can actually really taste the oiliness this is like it feels so subtle in your mouth that it doesn't overpower it just really right. is a part of it you're right can you imagine if that was melted pork fat like if it was yard, the lard <laughs> yeah. lard that this was made with i think like one bite and we'd just be like feeling it in our chests mm -hmm. it's surprisingly clean and not that heavy mm -hmm. wow at it and like incredibly flavorful absolutely it really makes that fried rice. Mm. Just make sure you take a bite and inhale some air back and forth to let it cool down in your mouth before you bite them. Mm. And then as it keeps on cooking, bits of the rice just completely crispify. The barbecue duck, the salad, it's all incredible. But this rice ending, it's the, the finishing of your dreams right here. Look at the scrape at the bottom. like a pat on the back of warmth and happiness. Highly recommended, and again, there's no mistaking what they serve here. In fact, you don't even need to know what they serve here. I mean, you don't even need to look at the menu here. Just walk in and you just tell them, like, the duck. And that's it, it will come to your table. There's no doubt, there's no guessing what you're gonna be served here. And that was delicious. Yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> but we're not done yet, though. We've got a few more things to eat, and we are heading back into the heart of Koreatown. Oh, let's go. So the next spot we are at is Two Hands uh, Hot Dogs or Corn Dogs. These are the famous Korean rice dogs that you'll see all over Korea as street food. And here in LA, of course, you want to kind of have your snack options as well. And this is one of those areas where you can get some really great snacks in Los Angeles. It's super popular. It's very light. So that's why I had to take you and show you this place. So you can either get like full mozzarella cheese, half cheese, half sausage. Okay, all pure cheese. All cheese? Yeah. Cheese. Okay, so potato with the whole mozzarella. They are called corn dogs, but they're not actually corn. It's made with a rice batter on the outside of the dogs. And you don't even need to get a hot dog. Sometimes it's just cheese on the inside. So I think we're actually just getting cheese on the inside with the potato. And he's wrapping them and going to deep fry them. Truly turned the corn dog into a gourmet creation. So many different combinations, and something that is very cool is that they don't—they make it fresh when you order it. One. Bam. <laughs> Thank you, man. Dog. And this one's quitting dog. <laughs> this is interesting because it's a totally different experience. Normally, well, even today we've gone to more traditional Korean restaurants, but then at the same time, Korea is known for their, they're leading the way with like pop culture, with like trendy culture. And so this is like some of the trendy snacks that Korea is so famous for. So it's a totally different side. And I mean, toward Korea, that's, I think what's amazing about Koreatown is all the different cultures. Exactly. Uh, I mean the subcultures of Koreans that are all within Koreatown. You ready all right, for man. This? So what's the look at that. Just look at how gourmet and ornate it is. Well all we have to do is bite into it and then the see how far we can stretch the cheese without breaking it. Alright, let's do this. Ready Cheers. Do this? Cheers. All right, go.
Oh, I'm hanging on. Oh, <laughs> we have a winner. <laughs> <laughs> that was, oh. That's an amazing accomplishment. <laughs> Steve, you're the man. Oh, yeah. You have. That's some experience eating Korean corn dogs right there, Steve. <laughs> uh -huh. But it tastes great, though, doesn't it? <laughs> All you people on YouTube are forever going to remember me for this. Huh? <laughs> All right, let's do one more poll. All right, hold on. Okay. <laughs> uh oh. Mmm. It's still going. Oh. 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 There we go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like a bungee cord. I will say it is hilariously fun to eat. You had corn dogs before, right? Yeah. Since I've had it maybe. The last time I had a corn dog was in 1995. <laughs> <laughs> the bungee cord. <laughs> You have a teammate. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. We gotta have a there teammate to help you pull. Steve, we've come to the end. Well, this is gonna be the grand finale of this ultimate Korean food tour of K-Town in Los Angeles. Steve has done a great job to organize, to put things together. And when I, okay, let's just say there's probably thousands of Korean barbecue in LA. Mm -hmm. And so I left Steve with the task to choose his favorite Korean barbecue. And Steve, where are we going? We are going to a knockout place. This is Agashi Gopchang here in Koreatown on 6th Street. Um, they are the sister restaurant of Baekchang, which is a super popular Korean barbecue in Los Angeles. They're known for the high quality meats and pork and also intestine barbecue ah. as well. And by the way, it is BTS's favorite Korean restaurant in yes. LA. <laughs> okay, and BTS is like one of the most popular K-pop groups, right? Absolutely. Korean barbecue feast to finish off this tour. Live in Jersey. Oh, okay. Fly fly. Bone in short rib? Bone in short rib. Okay. So the way we're gonna we're gonna butterfly it is very traditional Korean way. Okay. Um, so we'll, we'll keep it attached to the bone, we'll, we'll, we'll butterfly it out the bottom. Oh man, that's the kaibi, that's the Korean short rib, masterfully sliced so that the bone is all the way on one side, and then just a thin, even strip. Man, the marbling, the mixture, that ratio of meat to fat, skills. That was beautiful. Yeah, so it's gonna be a little bit of sugar and... Uh, Marinated for 48 hours? Uh, minimum of 48 hours, yeah. Wow, and what is it called in... In uh, Korean? That's called yangnyam kalbi. Yangnyam kalbi. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh man. Beautiful. Intestine. Prepping all of our different plates of meat. We've got the kalbi, we've got the marinated kalbi short rib, we've got the intestines that look like these giant bulging sausages. We've got some of the short rib, some of the ribeye, and some of the uh, brisket. Can 
JJK looks so good. Maximum. Oh, sliding into the booth. <laughs> oh, it's starting to hurt. To, you have to sit down slower and slower throughout the day. The meat looks so good. Such high quality. Oh, is that the, that's the brisket. Yeah. I love that floral, that floral pattern. This is a Korean meat festival. Oh, oh. you love that sizzle, don't you? Sorry, my bad. I think we're gonna have a like course by court meat party, meat by meat. But we're starting off. This is the brisket, which is very thinly sliced, and you can eat it at different stages as you want. I like it kind of half raw. And let me tell you, usually in Korean barbecue restaurants, the brisket goes first because it goes from lighter to heavier. Oh, yeah. okay. So. so it's a progression of meats. Exactly. <laughs> mm. Mm. Mm-hmm. Oh wow, it's so much flavor. Smoky. I love the fattiness to it. That sauce is nice and like tangy. Mm -hmm. It's tangy. Yeah. Kind of tangy, kind of sweet as well, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's why I put the bean sprouts and tangy dip it in that. Okay. Oh yeah. The meat is just slightly chewy. So much flavor. Mm. Gotta try that kimchi jjigae. Kimchi stew, tofu in here. Mm. Yeah, just this came out and you know it's good. Boiling hot. Yeah, you gotta be careful, it's hot. Oh, that kimchi jjigae is amazing. It's so full of flavor, right? Yeah, and it's not sweet. It's just like, you can taste the flavor of the chili, the tart sourness of it too, of that kimchi. Oh, it's amazing. Oh, yeah. We'll always start with unmarinated meats first. Ah. So you started with brisket, and again, he, he said it was leaner. Now we're going a little fattier cut. And then we'll go to the marinated meats, and then we'll go to pork, and then we'll go That's to That's always how it's done. It's kind of traditionally how it kind of sequences okay. based upon the richness of the cuts. Yes, yes. That's the loveliest side of the last time. The skirt steak just cooked medium rare. Sam cooked it to perfection. Salt for this, just a little dip in the salt. Yep, there we go, cook medium rare. Oh, 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 oh. oh, this one is amazing. Oh, it's so tender. Oh, 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 wow, so tender, so juicy. Ultimate beef flavor right there. Yeah, it's like really beef, right? So buttery though. Yes. Oh, yes. it's incredible. Wow, did you like the way you cooked it? It's perfect for me. All right, awesome. This like slightly bloody, yeah, the best. <laughs> mm. oh, yeah. Punch in the face with raw garlic. Okay, it's time to break up the meat with some salad. restaurant knocker. Marinated. So this is a marinated galbi. Yum, yum, marinated. It's called yangnam galbi. Oh, it's so good. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh man. Here we go again. This is one of the kings of all meats in Korea. Marinated kind And the marinated <laughs> minimum of 48 hours. You grill this again to perfection, then slices it down into strips. Man, yes. you can see that marble. You can hear that fat sizzle. Oh, if you were to squeeze it, it would be so juicy. That texture. Mm. Oh, wow, yeah. Okay. Oh, man. That's spectacular. Bouncy texture of it. Juices just pour out of it. I want to do a little shake to show you guys the texture of this. Look at that. <laughs> mm. Mm. Oh man. That is 
the piece of meat of your dreams right there. Yeah, I told you, it's pretty good, huh? Outstanding. Yes. When you come to this restaurant, you definitely need to get the marinated short rib carby. Mm. Mm. All the juices are just pouring out. That perilla leaf. I love the nuttiness of it. That sweet and sour taste as well. Billy. Normally he's really yeah. early. He's even about six thirty. They went. Yeah. Because we eat so much of it. But it's just little bit of what we do. All right, Steve, you ready for the pork belly? Absolutely. Chives. Mm. Oh, yeah. Fatty and juicy and meaty all at the same time. And smoky because of that fattiness. Yeah. Man. It's so good. Totally right, yeah. And pork belly, you want to eat it when the when it's good quality because if it's lousy quality, it's just so tough, it's dried out, not that, you know, rich. But this is so good because it's plump and yeah. soft. Yeah. Just, but then there's another way to eat can, it too. You can feel those layers. Yes. Fat to meat, fat to meat. Absolutely. The three layers. That's oh yeah, let's with this rat it with this chives. Mm -hmm. Fatty in all the right places. So these are the beef floor contestants. Sold them head tongue and cream. So finally one of the to finish off this meal, the fattiest, the juiciest meat of all. This is the large beef intestines. And it's what this restaurant is known for, what it's named after. This is one of the, the most famous things to order here. Those are huge. Those are so plump and wiggly. Oh man. And you just see that fat just kind of like spewing out the, the either end. This is the most jiggly thing you could possibly order. He slices it open and literally like a, a tube of toothpaste of fat just kind of like squeezes out in a floral formation. Amazingly fatty and juicy. The best piece right there. Where the fat has kind of caramelized and dried up a little bit. All right, cheers. Cheers. Boom. The insides just kind of dissolve in your mouth. Yeah, like bone marrow. And that outer casing is kind of chewy, a little bit chewy. Oh, it's really good. Yeah. It's so rich though, yeah. Yep, rich. So rich. Also the outside, I would say, is kind of crunchy as well. Man. Yeah, but the inside, really, it's just like bone marrow that just melts in your mouth. And it's so oily too. Oh. See, I told you, right? Melted fat. This is a cream barbecue. Cream barbecue. We'll finish it with like a cold noodle dish. So this is a, we call this tongchimi gukso. So tongchimi is, it's the name of a white fermented uh, radish kimchi. Kind of wash everything down, all of the fatty meats and the oily juices, the broth of that radish kimchi. So all of the juice that it creates, it's icy. Looks really good. I'm just going to try that broth first, maybe. Like a slushy. Oh man, it's like fruity and just like icy and so refreshing, yeah. You can yeah. feel all that, that beef sliding down. <laughs> yeah, a little sweet too. Oh yeah, it's really good. Now try these noodles, there's some cucumber in there, some radish. Mm -hmm. oh. mm. So refreshing. Oh yeah. Nice and chewy. And it's a good thing that we saved this to the end because this would have been a big filler if we had this in the beginning. That's the perfect way to end. <laughs> that was a, such a fun day, Steve. It was. It was. An absolutely amazing day. Thank you to Steve and his, your mom also for helping, but for like arranging for setting this all up and for also choosing the places, your favorite places, some of your favorite places yes. in Koreatown. Yes. That was like, this was the ultimate 
Koreatown, Korean food tour of Koreatown, K-Town in LA. And so a big thank you to Steve. He makes YouTube videos, he does food reviews. His channel is called Rockstar Eater, and I'll have it in the description box. You've gotta check out Steve's channel. He makes just fun videos, he has a huge heart, he's so friendly and he loves to eat. Uh, so thank you, Steve and that was an incredible day in Koreatown. And so that's gonna be it for this video. Huge thank you for watching. Please remember to give this video a thumbs up. Leave a comment below, I'd love to hear from you. And if you're not already subscribed, make sure you subscribe for lots more food and travel videos. Thanks again for watching. Goodbye from Koreatown in LA. See you on the next video. And then finally, if you haven't already, make sure you go back and watch part one of this ultimate Korean food tour of LA.